it's Rebecca with Bex Fine Art here to bring you another fun galaxy tutorial. For today's video, I will be showing you ah, how to paint these fun rainbow galaxy koozies. These are actually meant for slim cans, so they're perfect for white claws and trulies, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at our supplies. Here's the prepped bottle. You can see that it's been rainbow spray painted. And I'm sorry, my hands are really gross because I have been painting all day before I made this video and I'm too lazy to make them look nice for it. So pay attention to the painting, not my hands. As you know, if you've watched my previous videos, whenever I do a um, nebula sky, I pretty much mostly use a beauty blender of some sort. I have a whole variety that I pick and choose from. This one's been my favorite to use lately because I use the small end for the details and I kind of smooth it out with the bigger end. Um, so that's how I will be painting everything. And basically what I'm going to do first is just block in all of the colors before I really get started with the details of the clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you the colors I'll be using first. The color is really pretty. Phthalo Cyanine Blue. Brilliant Purple. Medium Magenta. Medium Free Light Yellow. Aqua Green. Medium Orange and titanium white and all the brands for that are liquitex except for this one it is blick just because my other liquitex tube is upstairs and i don't feel like going down to get it so like i said i'm just going to be blocking in all of the colors first and you're pretty much just going to see a time lapse of that if you want to see more detailed um, in-depth versions of the nebula clouds i do have several videos on that and this one it's going to be a lot of back and forth which is why i'm not necessarily going to give directions for each step but i will say when i'm doing very colorful bottles what i like to do is block in some shadowy areas first so i'm using that dark blue and all i'm doing is just sponging the paint literally wherever i feel like so this is my first step usually when I'm doing these is to, especially if it's not, if it's a bottle that doesn't have black on it, I like to map out kind of those shadowy and negative space areas. That way I can focus more on where the clouds are going to be. So this will be my first part of this bottle and then the rest that you'll see is just me blocking in the colors for the rest of the clouds. going through this you probably notice that once I switch colors they aren't just totally separate I try to blend the next color into the first one so you can see where I've color blocked that darker blue and then I added a little bit of purple blended that in and now I'm blending the pink in with the purple and blue and as I move around, I'm kind of fading the pink out, at which point then I'll start to add in some yellow and orange and blend those together. So by doing this, it really helps to um, make the whole bottle come together because the hard thing about painting stuff like this is it's not just a flat canvas you're painting a three-dimensional object that is a circle so you have to make sure that it blends all the way around. I can't just paint one little part of it and have that look good on its own. It has to go with the whole bottle otherwise part of it will look really good and then part of it will look like it doesn't connect. So that's what I like to do is I just like to go color by color and blend them in together to start and then I'll go back with more details to really help connect everything. all of my color blocking 
So you can see I've started to blend it. I definitely have to do a little bit more work, especially in this area. So what you'll be seeing next is me just working to blend all of the colors together. To show you a more finished example is this one that I just finished today that I love. So you can see like in areas like this, I've got almost every color kind of blended in there. It's not like it's just green and yellow. There's a lot going in there. So that type of technique is what I will be working towards for the rest of this bottle is really just making sure that everything blends together, maybe adding accents of other colors into each area to really make it pop out. Like you can see adding the orange right in there really helps to create a more three-dimensional look. blended the cup. I keep saying bottle, it's actually a koozie for white claws. Um, I've blended those colors almost as much as I think they need to be blended. I'll still go back and maybe do some more of this area I really like a lot. Um, but one of the ways that I'll also kind of bring everything together is I'm going to use a small brush and then I'll just go and kind of sharpen any areas that need it like on the tops of the clouds as well as in between. Um, I might even mix a little bit of white with some of the colors to highlight those sections more and then as I'm doing that like you see on this bottle I may go and add some textural things like you see in here, like that. They just help to bring a little bit more to the bottle. So that's what I will be doing next. So here is all of the details and the texture that I've added and I'm pretty happy with that. So next part will be to add the stars and I do have several tutorials on stars. I have one specifically for adding stars to your Hydro Flask so definitely check those out. But I'll be doing these plain white flicks, the little um, starbursts and then these blue glowing stars on here. So for that I'll just be using watered down titanium white. For the glowy stars I use this electric blue metallic just because it gives them a little bit of a shimmer and I mix that with the titanium white. Another paint that I use for the glowy stars that you can get at Michaels or Hobby Lobby is folk art metallic blue. Um, and this one is blue sapphire. So this one you can easily get, whereas this one you might have to get a whole set of metallics for. So either one works perfectly for that. And then I'll be using a very skinny brush to do those starbursts. So here is the finished koozie. So you can see all of the star details. 
Obviously it's very colorful. This is a part of my little rainbow um, nebula collection. All right, everyone, I hope you found this video helpful, especially in terms of painting a rainbow nebula. Remember that for any of these tutorials, they don't just have to be done on bottles or coffee mugs or tumblers. They can be done on anything, canvases, paper, you name it. So I just wanted to show you guys the finished koozies that I have done. These are gonna be available on my Etsy shop. So if you're not, make sure you're following my Instagram. It's at Bex Fine Art. And then you'll get the announcement once these are live to purchase. If you can't wait though, you can just send me an email, info.bex at gmail.com or message me on Instagram. I'm happy to just sell them straight out without putting them on Etsy. Once again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to come back Tuesday for my Time Lapse Tuesday video. Alright, see you guys next time!